so, I mean, how did how did you get into acting? How did you know you wanted to to be an actor? Ah, uh, I didn't really have any other skills. <laughs> You know, I you know I used to do uh, I, I used to impersonations for my family of you know like the Godfather and that kind of thing when I was younger and got a lot of um, a lot of positive feedback from it. I liked making them laugh and, uh, and it seemed like a natural progression to go into um, into the uh, entertainment field. You obviously can tell me no. Could you do an impression now? No. Okay. <laughs> Thank you for asking though. Okay. Younger uh, actors and actresses trying to make their way in the world. You're maybe in the crowd now. What kind of uh, what kind of advice do you have for them? I know it's not easy. Um, if you believe what you're saying, then the people will believe what you're saying. They want to they want to be transported. They want to be told a story. They want to be they want to see it. It's why they're turning on the TV. It's why they went to the movies. It's why they went to the theaters. It's, it's why they're sitting around the campfire staring at the person who's about to tell the story. They want to go there. So if you believe it, they'll believe it with you. If you're, you know, if it's about vanity or something else, then, you know, good luck. <laughs> so in case you can, he doesn't have the makeup on, but probably the, the one character you're most well known for in the Star Wars universe is Masa Maida. Order! We shall have order! So awesome. So awesome! Uh, you were in the prequels. Uh, man, what, what was that experience like? I mean, that's, that's back when things were still Lucas. Uh, yes, it was. And in fact, uh, over the course of uh, filming Phantom Menace, Attack of the Clones, and Revenge of the Sith, the filmmaking process changed considerably because even though um, on Phantom Menace there was a lot of CG work, uh, but it was basically for backdrops and city vistas and, and what have you. In a certain sense, it was a, it was quite a conventional film because the foreground action took place on sets, like the Galactic Senate. There were pods. There weren't hundreds of pods like there are in the film, but there were pods. Uh, the Nemoidian spacecraft bridge existed. It was about twice the width of, of this stage. Um, but by the time we got to uh, Revenge of the Sith, which would have been filming in 2003, 2004, um, almost nothing. Green screen the whole way. Green floors, green and green walls, ever, yeah. green ceiling. There were, there were occasions where we were filming in a room where everything was covered in either green or blue. You know, chroma keys it's called. Yeah. Do you, uh, do you keep up? Do you, do, you, uh, do you read the books? Do you watch the cartoons? That kind of thing? I, I, I'm, I will confess that I rarely have time to read because if you're in this business, you, if you've got a job, that's fine. It's the best job in the world when you've got one. If you haven't, you spend 99% of what other people might think is your free time trying to find your next employment. It's a, it's a, you know, being unemployed is a full-time job mm -hmm. in the movie business. So, I, I love to read. I wish I could say yes because I'm interested, but I literally just don't have the time. Even this afternoon, I, I'm, you know, when, when there's nobody wanting to ask me a question, I've got the laptop out, I'm communicating, I'm going to Los Angeles on Monday night. I have a meeting with a guy about a theatre project on Tuesday. You know, so even while I'm sitting over there twiddling my thumbs, I'm not twiddling my thumbs, I'm trying to create my next work opportunity. Come fly with me, let's fly, let's fly away. If you could use some exotic booze, there's a bar in Bar Bombay. Come fly with me, let's fly, let's fly away. Come fly with me. You get the idea. Let's hear it. <laughs> Jerome St. John Blake. That was awesome. Over here? Yeah, right. How did you get into Power Rangers? 
Well, I, like most people in Los Angeles, I moved to LA to be an actor. Because I always wanted to be an actor from the time I was seven years old. How old are you? How old? Mm -hmm. Nine years old. So sort of right around the same age as you is when I knew I wanted to be an actor. And so I always did every school play I could be in. Uh, sometimes I would skip gymnastics practice and get on the bus and go downtown and audition for traveling uh, shows that would be coming through the city. And I would audition as a local hire, as they call them, to, to be in the plays. Uh, and sometimes I got to play a dog once in uh, Cinderella. That was exciting. Uh, but uh, yeah, so I just always wanted to be an actor. And then in high school I did every play. In college I did every play I could. And I got a degree in theater as well. So, and then I moved to Los Angeles to be an actor, and I got really lucky. I got Power Rangers. So it's just something that I always knew that I wanted to do. And so after college, it, uh, it only took you a few months before you landed the big role? Uh, in theory, yes. So uh, after college, I moved to California, and I was in Los Angeles for like three months. And that's when I did my first audition for Power Rangers. At the time, it was called Phantoms. That was the original name of the show. And uh, so I went and auditioned for a show called Phantoms, and then I had eight callbacks, as they say, for, for the show, and at the end, I got the role of Billy. That was 1995. What was, did you was know? It was 1992. 92, okay. Yes. Did you know what this was going to, what did you, what did you initially think of it? Well, we didn't really understand what we were getting into okay. when we first got the show. Uh, they said it was a superhero show. They said there's dinosaurs involved. Uh, you'll morph. You get your powers from the dinosaurs. We didn't understand what any of that meant. And if you've ever seen the unaired original pilot episode, it's pretty weird. Like, we would morph and you would see our faces morph into dinosaurs. It looked uh, very bizarre. So they changed a lot of things from the original pilot to when we went to series. but. You know, no, we never truly understood what we were getting into. Even after we filmed, uh, basically we, affirmed, we filmed the whole first season before it even started airing. We still didn't quite understand what we were making uh, until we actually saw an actual episode. And then we were like, oh, okay, kind of get it. So you've got, you've got Blue, you've got Triceratops, and you're kind of the, the brains, the intelligent one of the group. Right. Uh, did you enjoy those aspects? Did you want to be a different color? Did you want to play a different role? Or what, you know, what are you... No, I don't know that I wanted to play a different role. I originally auditioned for the role of Jason, the Red Ranger, but at that time it was called Victor, and I had three auditions for that role. Uh, that's what I was originally called in to, to do. Uh, but I could tell that the producers and casting director were going in a different direction, and I wasn't going to get that role. And so I begged to read for the role of Billy, and they told me, no, thank you, you don't, you don't fit the breakdown, you're not what we're looking for. And I said, please, I know I can do this role, and they said no. So I went to the bathroom, and I wet my hair down and I borrowed somebody's glasses and I borrowed somebody's button-up shirt and I buttoned my shirt crooked and I came back and I said, please let me read for this role. And eventually they were like, okay, you can read for it. And I did it and they were like, okay, we'll bring you back. So, you know, I always like to tell that story just because I want people to know, like sometimes we're told no in life, but you have to be persistent. And if you believe something in your heart, you should do everything in your power to do it without acting like a nut job. Or a right, stalker, a certain or line crazy. you don't want to cross, yeah, right? Yeah, there's a certain line you don't want to cross. Uh, you know, had they told me no a couple more times, I would have been like, okay. But I, I knew I could do it. So, uh, you know, and then I got the role of Billy. From behind. So, Martin, if you could pick or star or be part of any movie that you wanted, what, what would you go with? Annie. Oh, Annie. Annie. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and you're talking about... That would be coming up or one from the past? Oh, shit. I mean, who wouldn't want to be in The Godfather, you know? Or I would have loved to, you know, even the, you know, smoking the band and stuff like that. You know, or Grease. You know, that's when they made good movies back in the day. But nowadays, I mean, I'm blessed to be in Pirates, you know? Avatar is one thing, but that's so CGI. I mean, they're making bank. You know, don't, don't. There you go. Now, Martin, Pirates of the Caribbean, obviously, so much star power, so much star power, a lot of ego on set. There's got to be some crazy yeah. stories. Actually, there's no ego. If, if the number one guy on the call sheet doesn't have an ego, no one else can either. No, you don't do that. I mean, it's 
starts like that, like David Boreanaz is um, whatever. He, but he's a prick, so he's a prick, and he's number one on the call sheet. And everybody else is gonna be. Like, yeah, it's gonna be a jerk, and yeah. yeah. So but when you got when you got a profession like Johnny, and you know you're coming off the boat, and you're on land, and there's there could be a two or three thousand people that know that's where you're gonna be that day. And when you come off, if he starts signing autographs right there, you're signing autographs and taking pictures until every last fan is satisfied. So, uh, you know, number one is doing it. You gotta do it. Clark Kent, Dean Cain. How much? How much of? How much of Dean is in Clark that we see on screen? Well, they're the exact same person. Yeah, a hundred percent. No, no. I mean, there's a lot of that. There is a lot of any character you play is in a series. For the most part, you're going to bring a lot of yourself to it. I mean, there are some actors who don't do that, and there's specific real characters that play. Like, maybe it's Hugh Laurie on House, you know, he's not like that guy. But there are, there are a lot of other roles, and, and, and this one, very much a lot of myself was in Clark, without a doubt. Not so much as the Superman, but much more Clark. But that just happens over time, I think. So uh, I wouldn't pretend to be anywhere near as moral and wonderful nor is super as Clark, but there's certainly a lot of my personality that throughout the years you get to blend in with the character. I'm not gonna say specifically which parts, but only the good parts. My first film was Big Mama's House 3. I really, I peaked, guys. I peaked on Big Mama's House. Endgame was nothing. Big Mama's House all the That's way. Big Mama's House. Big Mama's House. So I basically have these fat suits I'd have to dress the actors in, take care, maintain, let me tell you, they get real stinky, and it's not like you can put them in the wash. Right. So yeah, it was. It was. I had the most amazing experience. So I loved it. And then from there, someone I worked with recommended me for X Men First Class when they came to Georgia. So I worked a month on that. The whole beach sequence. That's okay. basically I helped wrangle the beast. So I'd like put his arms on, put his legs on. I'd brush him like a dog. You know, groom his hair, and then. But it's so funny because most of the time we spent on the beach playing a. There's a game called I can't say the word, but it's a card game. Okay. It's BS. I gotcha. Yeah, and so it was like this surreal experience to play BS with uh, Jennifer Lawrence because they were dating at the time, and Nicholas Holt. So okay. we just all be in the tent playing BS with each other, <laughs> and I'm like, I'm playing with the Beast and Mystique. It's really weird. And then yeah, and then there was a bit of a delay, and then it, when Marvel came to a bit of a delay, and then it, yeah, it's all reputation, it's all the people you know. They were like, hey, there's this girl we worked with in X Men First Class. If you need somebody, she's there. And then so I started on Civil War was my first Marvel film, and then Civil War I worked a bit on Guardians Two. I did Spider Man Homecoming. I did a little bit on Ant Man and Wasp, Infinity War, and then but I also work on other stuff. I I worked on the newest Godzilla that's coming out. And I did some time on, uh, there's a movie called Brightburn. It's like okay. the, uh, the Anderburn. It's like the Superman movie, so I worked on that as well, so yeah. Could you both talk about your, your careers, how you started, um, and, and where you are today? Uh, well, I got into business when I was 13 years old. A small independent company came to my town, and I walked up a couple miles to it and just hung around until after the show. I've been in love with wrestling my whole life. It's my earliest memory of television is actually watching pro wrestling. It's not cartoons or Bugs Bunny or anything like that. You know, so I grew up loving it and watching it and I was just fascinated with it. Um, and so this company came and I just hung around and I became affiliated with the company and I would do odds and ends and anytime I could, I would get in there and train with the guys. And at 15, I became a referee and at 16, I had my first match. And that was in 1991. Wow. So yes, I'm that old. <laughs> I'm older. It's hard to tell under the mask, though. The mask hides it well. Yeah. I, I, I got a face made for a mask. Well, your, your characters always gravitated towards people. You, I mean, get out there, and, and the, the support of the crowd is so... You're, you were always so engaging in WWE. It was, it was a, uh, something to watch. Just the way that people reacted to you. I, I think that, uh, um, you know, you were there before John Cena. But Cena's character is is the only character that I've seen that people just want to root for no matter what. And your character, you, you, you had that going for you 
R right out of the game, I think. Well, with the character, right? Yeah, I think so, but I think the people saw that I believed in myself. And I think the people believed in me because I believed in me. If I didn't believe in myself, and I've seen that happen with, you know, there's talents throughout the uh, history of business that they've been given a character and they'll go out there and you can tell they don't buy that shit. And if they don't believe it, then the fans aren't going to believe it. I think the fans have fun because they saw that I was having fun. And I really was having fun because I just looked in the mirror and was like, okay, I'm dressed like a superhero. I go, I'm going to have to be ridiculous. You know, yeah, I didn't, I didn't have any superheroes I could call to go, hey, what do I do out there? I was making it all up on the fly. The whole way the hurricane talked, you know, through, through howling winds and pouring rain. I mean, there's no other superheroes that talk like that. I just did that. I don't even know why. You know, and the way I walked, I was just trying to be different and have as much fun as I could. And I think that's what the people gravitated to. It's like, man, that guy's having fun no matter what. And when I started working in comic, comic books, officially when I was in my senior year of high school, first in the first in the technology horror stores for DC Comics, the House of Secrets was the comic. Carol Lando saw my work. Uh, he was a DC artist in the 1950s, and immediately, I actually was on my way to work for Creepy and Eerie, for Warren Publishing, and I just had to stop off with DC on the way, and uh, Joe saw my work, and he told me that he was actually the art director for Warren Publishing as well, and he begged me not to go there. Stay here, he said, don't go there, please. You open up a drawer, there's 250 scripts in that drawer, and you have as many as you want. So all I wanted was work, I said, okay. So uh, I started working on all the horror stories for, uh, for House of Secrets, and just something that I've kind of stuck with for my entire career.